You're listening to an Anderson Entertainment production. This episode, we'll be talking a load of old bull in fab facts. No change there. We're going back to the very beginning in the randomizer, and I'll be taking a look back at 2020 in our fab review of the year. Oh, I can't wait! That's all coming up in Pod 133 of the Jerry Anderson Podcast. This is Christmas Control. Stand by. Let's go. Spectrum is green. The Jerry Anderson Podcast with Jamie Anderson and Richard James. Welcome to the Jerry Anderson Podcast. Ooh. We're releasing this on the, it says on my script, Jamie, yes. the 28th th- 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 of December well, 2020. Is that right? Uh, yes. You you shouldn't <laughs> take the mickey out of people with <laughs> typing impediments. T-H-T-H, December. <laughs> 28th the 5th of December. Yes, well, yeah. that's a day. I'm afraid I can't <laughs> come up with an explanation. In fact, I'm so stuffed yeah, I from know. Christmas, I can I can't barely move. think or barely speak, really. <sighs> Absolutely. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen in this. Uh... No, it, it was the last mince pie <sighs> that did it for me. And the stuffing in the turkey. I mean, and the bread sauce. Do you know? So much bread sauce. We had beef brisket as well as turkey. Oh, for, nice. uh, that, Sorry to any vegetarians or vegans oh, yes. uh, listening, yeah. but um, yes. it's true. I, I can't pretend otherwise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I hope yes. you had a great Christmas. I must start this off by saying thank you all for your lovely Cheers Jerry Anderson uh, social media posts mm, on Boxing yes. Day. Just lovely. What a great selection. And uh, yeah, we're very touched by the messages there. So always thank you. Yeah. For every one of those. Um, yeah. Now, the celebration of everything Jerry Anderson doesn't stop on Boxing Day. In fact, oh, it sort of on. restarts on Boxing Day. So Too right. what have we got coming up today to celebrate the fab worlds of Jerry Anderson? Well, uh, Jamie Anderson, son of the legendary TV producer, writer, director, Jerry. Uh, we've got... Uh, <laughs> Chris Dale's amazing randomizer coming up a little later on, of course. We haven't said hello to Chris. There he is. Oh, look, he's passed Hi, out by the fireplace. Look, he's well, he's balancing that half, what is that, half empty bottle of port, I think, on his tummy. I there. thought it was the port, the, re- look, the reason he's flat out yeah, there. Snoring oh, away. Chris. We'll wake him up in time for the randomizer a little later on. We've also got uh, Fab Facts, I shouldn't wonder, coming up any minute now. Afraid so. And I wonder, is there any Jerry Anderson news? Well, We'll just have to wait and see. And a little later on, we've got the first part of my look back over 2020 and the podcasts that we've produced this year. Gosh, because there have been, believe it or not, (laughs) about 51 this year. I know. Now, that's slightly less than we had the year before. Is it? Yes. (laughs) Because we had, (laughs) what... 52 the year before. I think we did, yeah. This yeah. is the 52th, isn't it? Or the 50, <laughs> it is, it the 52nd. second of and... or, or as you would write it, the 52nd. And, 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 and. Yes, all right, Richard. Thank you very much. You're quite yes. right. Yeah, and also I should say, we'll be um, sharing some messages from our lovely podstrons, of course, who've been emailing us at podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk. They've even been hashtagging us on Twitter, Jerry Anderson Podcast, and they've been uh, uh, joining and um, having fun in our Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash podstrons, and we'll be having a, a visit there a little later on too. Can't wait. No, it's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Now, while we all sort of um, fester in our post perandial, post festive state, yes, I think that I should give you a very special fab fact. Oh. oh. Right. Here we go. Now, time for this week's Fab Facts. Right. Yes. Now, Richard, I know what you're thinking. What? You're thinking, oh, Fab Facts. Well, and you're know. thinking, oh, he's going to get his book Fab Facts out, and he's going to flick through it, and I'm going to have to shout Fab, and then he's going to read a Fab Fact, and I have to pretend it's Fab. That's what you're thinking, well, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Is that not the case? Well, despite the fact that over there, post-Christmas Dale is yeah. uh, sat, passed out, or I should say laid out flat, yes. passed yes. out from too much port, mm. naughty Chris. Prior to that, he did manage to write a fab fact. Ah. A special fab fact related to a recent happening that he thought we should all share for this post-Christmas episode. Oh, so really? rather than me flicking through a book of fab facts, I'm going yeah. to read out a fab fact authored ah. by our very own Chris Dale. Oh, well, in that case, I love it already. Ah, I thought you would. Chris says, 
Something some of our listeners may have been keeping an eye on lately was the Bray Studios production sale auction at Eubanks in Surrey. It was oh, yes. held on the 30th of November. Mm-hmm. It was a huge collection of Anderson items that were retrieved from uh, Bray Studios after Dad left at the end of the 1980s. Yeah. And it became the property of studio driver Julian Bell. We know Julian was a big fan. He used to buy stuff from the uh, the, the Jerry Anderson store and drop me the occasional uh-huh. email before his sad passing. Yeah. Now, among these items were some of the major hero craft from Terror Hawks, like Battle Hawk, which sold for £11,000. Crikey. What's that, $16,000 for our US listeners? Yeah, Gosh. Amazing. Many of the main character puppets from Terror Hawks. Mm-hmm. £2,500 for Mary Faulkner, anyone? Wow. Mm. So yeah, it was mostly the 80s Anderson stuff. Terror Hawks, Dick Spanner, Lieutenant, those adverts. With a oh, yeah. handful of Super Mario Nation era items in there, including the head of Captain Oka himself. Right. Which sold for £19,000. Just the head? Just the head, £19,000. Wow. What's that, Weird. $26,000, something like yeah. that? Yeah. I'm guessing. I'm doing these on the fly. Yeah, that's very good. Mm, thank you. Uh, known for my math skills. Many of these More screen used... spelling. All right, thank you very much. Uh, many of the screen used items that went under the hammer are the kinds of things that were always visible on the shows, but not really visible enough to let viewers spot any jokes or references hidden in the details. Oh, yeah. So now that those items are out there for fans to enjoy, some bidders are getting to discover those gags for the very first time. Uh-huh. Among the Terror Hawks items that went up for sale were two diplomas seen on the office wall of Sheriff Bull from Terror Hawks in four episodes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, it's impossible to see uh, in the episodes what they say, even on the Blu-rays. However, thanks to Christopher Dale, we can now reveal what those two diplomas actually say. Ah. Oh. And we're going to reveal what Sheriff Bull presumably spent years studying and training and working hard to achieve. Okay. Warning to those of a sensitive nature, but please don't take the first one too seriously. So in <laughs> right. chronological order... Go on. Certificate the first. This is to certify that Cyrus Bull has completed the Law Enforcement Officers Academy training course in police brutality and has been awarded his gratuitous violence degree with honours majoring in advanced knee-to-groin technique. (laughs) This is signed by P.D. something, it almost looks like Darrow, like Paul Darrow. Right. And dated September 13th, 1999. Hang on. There's also a little emblem marked GBH there too, so it's not not so cute, really. But um, (laughs) the other one is a Badwater County Diploma awarded to Cyrus Bull Mm -hmm. to certify that the holder has never seen a Rolls Royce in Badwater County in over 20 years. Dated 12th of June, 2020. Uh, As an ongoing uh, gag there for Bull, who never seen a Rolls Royce in Badwater County. Gotcha. That one is signed by what looks like M.G. Harris, District Attorney. Now, that's Eh? not the M.G. Harris who wrote the Gemini Force One books. That is a coincidence. Detective work, courtesy of Mr. Dale, suggests that it's probably designer Mark Harris, okay. who also designed the Terror Hawks logo, was an art director and all sorts of stuff, and is right. now a very highly regarded art director, having yep. recently done some Star Wars stuff with J.J. Abrams and uh, Dumbo, the recent Dumbo film. Aha! So yes, the uh, not seeing a Rolls Royce thing is a reference to uh, the episode Gunfight at Oki's Corral where the Terror Hawks take Hudson to Badwater County and uh, because he can change colour, Bull's officers were confused as to how many Rolls Royces there are in that episode. <laughs> okay. However, since Bull never actually sees Hudson in the episode, you'll be pleased to know that his 20-year stint of having never seen a Rolls Royce, uh, which he worked so hard for, is something that he still maintains now. <laughs> and uh, as for the brutality stuff, we're fairly doubtful that Sheriff Bull has ever had to put that training into practice because... First of all, almost nobody lives in Badwater County. Yeah. And uh, second of all, it would have involved him getting out from his desk, which he never did. <laughs> right, OK. Wow, nice one, though. Nice spot. That's so, good work. Well, I mean, I-, I believe that Chris is the proud owner of these items, which is oh, how he's able to tell us that now. I see. So well, well done, done Chris. Chris. And he also picked up uh, the phone from uh, Bull's desk. Oh, lovely. Bulls. 
But it's amazing how much effort people go to to putting in these little visual gags, which you'll probably never see and you yes. wouldn't know about unless we recover things all these years later, like Chris has with yes. these props. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, we had those um, police addresses from Space Precinct. Oh, yes. Which included Officer Serple. That's right. Who lived at Editor House, I remember. <laughs> That's right. Since she was an editor yeah, exactly. on the series. So, yeah, it's yeah. funny, these little gags that sort of people put in to please themselves. Yeah. I believe nice. there was a UFO one that turned up a few weeks ago as well. Too rude to mention on the podcast, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. But if you haven't seen that, then uh, maybe <laughs> just send me a tweet and I'll share the screenshot with you. Lovely. There you go. So, a few Very visual nice. gags. Mm, like it. Uh, I'm sure there are many more. If you've spotted a visual gag in anything Anderson or a little um, bit of wording somewhere that was obviously meant to please the art department and was probably never intended to be spotted, let us know. Podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk. But until next week, we're bid farewell to this week's Bull Fact. Yeah, I like it. It is always the details in the things. I remember on Space Precinct, I don't know if I've ever talked about this before, but mm. there was a, they did the banknotes. And I, I think you have one or two, don't you, Jamie? And I'm sure I have one I somewhere, do. the Where Demeter City they? banknotes. Not in jokes as such, not gags, but beautifully designed and printed uh, with, I think, a tarn on the cover on one side and, I don't know, maybe a crayon on the other. It's always those details that I try and look out for. But how lovely, how lucky that Chris has got hold of one of those uh, certificates as well. It's very nice. Well, both of them, in fact. Yes. Both of them. Yeah, yeah. no, he's great. done a great job there. So well done, Chris. Enjoy your certificates. Yeah. Now, over on our Facebook group, mm-hmm. facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash podstrons, oh, yes. Morty Vicar has said that uh, I'm announcing my new favourite podcast guest, Dr. Matthew Sweet. Mm, Good choice. Yes, this is following the uh, couple of uh, pods uh, three or four weeks ago. Uh, He says the bar is now raised stratospherically high. I think he's got as close as you can get to the definitive appreciation of the complexities of a genius. Plus, he did it to an audience of that genius's own flesh and blood, as well as legions of devoted fans, all delivered with obvious respect. I'm full of admiration, Mm. says uh, Morty Vicar. And that's quite right, too. I listened to that and... um, you know, he didn't hold back in, in, in his thoughts, but none of it was was intended uh, or, or felt to be, um, you know, particularly insulting. It was all very, uh, as uh, uh, Morty Vicar says there, just very um, uh, respectful yeah. uh, and thoughtful. Yes. Very nicely done. So uh, do listen to that, Dr. Matthew Sweet, if you haven't already. Uh, CJ List is uh, talking about, I don't even remember this a few weeks ago, the John Barry music that was added to the uh, uh, to UFO, I think, yes. in Italy, rather than Barry Gray. And he said, I'm surprised they haven't sued the people who made these uh, compilation movies for using that music. The editing certainly makes for one very action-packed episode. The one firing from space must have had a good aim or a really powerful laser cannon to reach that far. So I'm guessing that it was recut with the music, was it, and edited together to make it more interesting and fast-moving, perhaps? Uh, I, do you know what? I can't remember what we said, but... <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> I think I but, think it was it was the Italian version. They had to redub it, and that obviously they meant new music tracks yes. going in, and they ended up putting uh, the John Barry um, Bond stuff in instead. Yes, yes. And uh, CJ List also said, 54 years ago, Thunderbirds made the leap from the small to the big screen. This was, of course, a few years before it became trendy for successful TV shows to get the movie treatment, and unfortunately, slightly too soon. If they'd moved on to other projects and maybe returned to Thunderbirds later, who knows what could have happened? What do you think, Podstrons? He says... Where do you think the Tracy Boys would have gone if they had made a third or maybe even fourth movie? Well, Ooh. surely the boys must have gone to space. I know we had uh, going to space in Zero X. Yeah. In Thunderbirds Argo. But yeah. I think it would have been nice to see the gang get out there and face something yeah. major, a major space disaster. Yeah. And do you think that could have been the way the TV series would have gone, as is common now, to you know to become a movie series? Woulda, Who shoulda, knows? coulda. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's from such a different era. The approach was so different. I, you know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I can't imagine uh, Lou ever having thought, oh, yes, I'll, we'll do another movie to fill up these two box office failures. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, can't see that happening. And uh, finally, Trevor Cutler shared his uh, latest additions to the collection of his uh, Jerry Anderson merch, which are uh, Space 1999 on Blu-ray and a Daleks comic. Oh, yes, Ooh. the Daleks bookazine. Yes, I bet he uh, had good fun with that over Christmas. So, uh, yes, thanks for sharing your thoughts over on our Facebook group. Do join in the fun. Make it your New Year's resolution to join our uh, Podstrons Facebook group and uh, you can see what they're all getting up to over there. It's a very easy one to do. Just go to facebook.com slash group slash Podstrons. There you go. And and answer the the three questions and you will be allowed in. And that's that. Done. Yeah. 
Richard James? Yes? I think it's time for the final <gasps> edition of this oh, year's... It's not Terry Adlam again, is it? Ger- no, Terry is oh. ter- Terry's spent. Instead, right. yes. it's the Jerry Anderson News. Oh, thank heavens. It's the final... Yeah. I was waiting for you to say newsy, newsy, news, you see. Oh, yeah. It's the final... What? Yeah. Oh, oh sorry. Go on. It's the final... Newsy, news, news, news. Of the year. Yeah, all right, I'm not going <laughs> yeah. to do it again. Sorry. Thanks, thanks uh, for doing that. Okay. Uh, yes, the final Jerry Anderson news of 2020. And, um, well, you know, it's sort of Christmassy New Year's break. There's not a huge yeah. amount going on. Sure. Now, there is already, or there will very shortly be, a uh, New Year's clearance sale going on. So right. If you want to pick up some bargains go and grab them there there's so much exciting stuff coming next year mm. there's some um well i don't i don't want to go oh, come on i don't want to let out too much out of the bag but just, um, just something come on there's just come a bit closer mm. there's cool. some um some new cosplay stuff coming it's there yeah uh, and it hasn't been out before and i think it's quite cool and um, wow also yeah there are some some books coming right um both old and new <gasps> i wow. really shouldn't be telling you this no i know that's right no one's listening and some new audio stuff coming is there yeah yeah right. and um well i i, I know I, yeah. i'll stop no, no, I, I, yeah, yeah, no. i've already said too much but there's no, but, loads wow. of new stuff coming great next year it's all very very exciting it's kept us very busy at the end of this uh, this year so yeah core um, yeah lots of cool stuff to come now you may have enjoyed last week in fact, uh, just a couple of days ago, the it first episode of... Uh, well, because you may not have seen it. <laughs> oh, uh, the see. first episode of Series 2 of Century 21 Tech Talks, and by now you will know that they're being yeah. voiced by the rather marvellous John Culshaw, yeah. who for Series 2 has resurrected Commander Ed Bishop. Well, now I think he's Colonel Ed Bishop, is he? Or uh, even higher ranked. Anyway, an older, uh, wiser Commander Bishop... Ah. Commander Straker, sorry, lead um, who's uh, who's talking from 2020, reviewing all sorts of vehicles from the 20, Century 21 universe and beyond. Great! So more of those every Saturday. I think for the next ten weeks, something like that. Oh, next wow, nine, eight, ten weeks, something You're around there. Busy? Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Great. And I can tell you that Century 21 Tech Talk Series Three is already in the can. Oh. And will follow later in 2021. So you've right. got lots of cool YouTube stuff to look forward to. Many other fun bits and pieces on the way. And yeah. um, we're hoping that 2021 will see a bit of a return to normal for commissioning and TV production and that kind of thing. Which then hopefully yeah. means we'll ha- have some other news for you yeah. coming soon. Because Richard, you haven't said it for a while, but... There's always something new happening in the Jerry Anderson universe. I mean, that's not what you used to say. You've changed it. Is, is that it's the new so take for 2021? Yeah. Because you normally say there's brand new Jerry Anderson stuff happening oh. right now. You're right. Yeah. I haven't said that in a while, have I? Actually, before we just uh, finish this segment, I'm just going to get my diary here. Um, just a minute, because I just want to mark... Um, let's get a pen. Oh, there's that, yes. the, uh, there's that date we were talking about. Uh, fifth of the fifth. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I might... Just five, after 5 o'clock? 5.05. That's a yeah, good I'll time. Just, I'll yeah. just mark that in. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I'm glad you remember that because yeah, um, yeah. it would be a real shame are. to forget. That's right. Good. Well, now I'd just like to take this opportunity to wish all of our lovely Posterons a fantastic new year. Uh, yeah. Clean slate ahead. Let's yes. uh, push 2020 aside. It desperately needs to be pushed aside. It really we'll does. We'll forget about all that horrible stuff and things will start brightening up very, very soon, I'm sure. So happy new year to all of you in advance of, uh, well, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day coming up. Yeah. And um, here's to a rather fab 2021 that was the news end of the year news yeah. oh, what a perfect but, fit that was beautiful yeah, lyrics thank you yes no uh, honestly yeah but you say you know you want to get rid of 2020 and forget all that i mean there was some good stuff in 2020 jamie and i shall be reflecting upon it Ooh. in the first part of our special feature coming up very shortly which is my look back at the first part of the year on the podcast what we got up to uh, some of our favorite guests uh, some of our favorite randomizers the emails the messages and so on i've collated them all together for a first look at the first half of the year and that's coming up quite shortly i think to be followed by part two next week yes can't wait 
I know, but before we get there, just a few more emails. Here's Rob Casty, for example. Now, he says, Hi, Richard and Jamie. This was from a couple of weeks ago. I received all the items I bought at the Eubanks auction today, mm. so I'm now in a position to give you a few more details. Do you want to hear what he's got, Jamie? I would love to. It seems perfect right. this episode. He says, firstly, the gun. As I suspected, it is a hero prop. I managed to get the ancient 9-volt battery out of the grip and there was a lot of leakage and corrosion on the terminals. I cleaned that off and fitted a new battery and lo and behold, the lights came on. The Ooh. trigger has a spring attached to it, but there's no firing light in the barrel. The gun belt has Kathy written on the inside <laughs> in black pen. Huh? That'll be okay. Catherine Chevalier then. That's right. So these were from the uh, Space Police pilot, I believe. The shirt, he says, has loose threads where the shoulder patches were removed. I'm assuming that uh, back before all this stuff was saved from the bin, someone thought they were the only part of the shirt worth saving since the rest of it is torn and burnt. Next, the silicon-eyed face mask is quite flimsy and showing a little damage so unlike the helmet i'm definitely not going to be letting people try this on it's staying on the display head there are an additional three squares of the same material which have velcro on them and i'm assuming that these are to cover up any bare skin showing when they are between the mask and the undershirt i'm absolutely thrilled to have these items in my collection but as i said in my last email i'm happy to make them available for public display i only hope that will be in the not too far in the future says rob cassidy Thank you for those details. Amazing. And he posted us some pictures as well. And I think he's popped some up on the uh, Podstrons Facebook group too. So uh, you can find them there. You'll have to scroll back a few weeks, but they'll be there somewhere. That's uh, very nice. Yeah, it'd be great to see them in person, wouldn't it? And uh, and have a look at those. Well, who knows? That might not Indeed. be too far away. Yeah, Fingers crossed. That's right. Um, Hannah got in touch again to say hi, Jamie, Richard and Chris Dale too. Thanks for reading my previous email about my own little project with the Thunderbird vehicles. When I said that I'm doing something different with them, I meant something very different. During my time watching and researching Thunderbirds, I've been guessing that it's not only the Tracy brothers or Lady Penelope or Parker that are seen as the main stars. The Thunderbird craft always seem to be the real show stealers, Thunderbird mm. 2 especially. Almost, she says, as if they're characters themselves. Well, thought Hannah, what if they really were characters? I've been playing about with this thought for a few years in my sketchbook, mainly for myself, and I've started with Thunderbird 1 and I feel happy with it. It's still not quite done yet, but it should be ready to be revealed soon. I'm still working on the others and they're not ready yet. How would you like to see them? She said I could put them on my Instagram page or I could email them to you or maybe I should just join the Podstrons instead. Please let me know, Hannah. Well, Hannah, I know that you have since joined the Podstrons Facebook group and I know that they'd all be delighted to see your pictures there and I would too. That's a really lovely thought though, isn't it? But aside from the Tracy brothers and Lady Penelope, etc., it is the craft that are the show stealers. And yes, they do feel like characters in their own right, don't they? They absolutely yeah. do. And well, yeah. they're, in a, they're an essential part. Imagine Thunderbirds yeah. without the Thunderbirds. I mean, you're quite right. Doesn't yes. bear thinking about. No, that's true. And finally, Chris Yost, again from a few weeks ago, says, I just wanted to say thank you again for sending me Chris, uh, Richard's sweater. It arrived today and I'll be getting it wrapped for my wife very soon. Thank you once again. All the best as always, Chris Yost. Well, I hope she enjoyed her sweater, Chris. Mm. I hope uh, it and uh, if she didn't like it, then you can't blame us. No. Well, you can blame me. I that's suppose, true. Yes. In a sort of roundabout way. Yeah. Deal. Anyway, do get in touch with us uh, in the new year, podcast at jerryanson.co.uk. I'd really love to hear your favourite parts of the podcast over the past 12 months because I'll be letting you know what mine were shortly. Don't forget, of course, you can email us uh, or rather subscribe to us well, on whichever channel your platform you're listening to us on just to make sure that you get updates every time a new episode lands and you can leave us a review and a rating and share us with your friends so they get to hear us too. Perfect. I like that you use lands rather than drops. I mean, well, we, yes, uh, I suppose we really a, should use yeah, sort of sci-fi and aviation yeah, that's terms. True. That's right. It's a wonder that it's taken me so long to think of that. Really, I know only 130 odd. Um, yeah. I'll uh, I'll get, look at my aviation glossary and see if we can find out some other cool Ooh. terms we could use. We like it. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, Great. thank you for all that, and thank you for. Um, Getting in touch with this, Podstrons. We really yeah. appreciate hearing from you. Now, Richard, you've been working very hard on something. So um, do you want to tell us all about it? Yeah, well, you know, it's that time of year for looking back, isn't it? So, uh, And as you said earlier, it hasn't been a great year, but we have had some wonderful moments in our podcast. So I thought I'd take a look back over the first six months and share my favourite parts of the podcast with our listeners. Oh, let's hear it. Let's get started. As we approach the end of this rather strange year, I thought I'd take a look back to see what we got up to here on the podcast throughout 2020. 
Did lockdown and the threat of virus stop us getting great guests and features and releasing new material? Not on your Nelly. January saw an interesting edition of Fab Facts. I know, who knew? Talking about the existence of a lost Jerry Anderson show. The Secret Service, which had, as you know, heralded the end of the Super Mario Nation era. Yeah, it did. Which is rather sad. Yeah. Now, a lot of that team had been working on the puppet shows since Twizzle oh, yeah. in 1957. Mm-hmm. So many of them have been there for 12 years, kind of perfecting the art of Super Mario Nation and doing their absolute finest work. But by the time the Secret Service was over, it was time for Century 21 to move on to UFO. But the puppet team were really hopeful that there was some way that they could keep going. Yeah, I should imagine so. Well, obviously, because yeah. they, they loved what they were doing. Yeah. So Des Saunders, uh, director and uh, I think he was production supervisor on various things. He did all sorts of stuff. Lovely mm-hmm. chap. Sadly, lost him a couple of years ago. Des put forward a proposal for a new puppet series that would have come after the Secret Service called Atlantis. Oh, right. Mm. Yes. So it would have been something like a mix of Thunderbirds and Stingray. Stingray, of course, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, with a family, with a father, two sons and a daughter, living in the remains of the lost city of Atlantis. Oh. They were supposed to have some special powers, like telepathy and teleportation, and the power to control the sea. Oh, this is fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they would have, they would have saved people in distress, which is the Thunderbirds thing. Yeah. Stop bad guys, obviously a bit Thunderbirds and a bit Stingray. Yeah from various naughty bits and pieces they were up to. Yeah. And Des even commissioned Terry Curtis, who was one of the sculptors... Yes. ...to make one of the characters. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So I don't think there was a... No, that character wasn't named as far as I know, but he looked a bit like Captain Blue, like an aquatic Captain Blue. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Nice. And they were going to be in the Captain Scarlet proportion, so they were keeping that human set proportions. But unfortunately... Dad and Sylvia had kind of moved on by that point. They were like, no, it's, right. you know, it's live action time. Yes. So, sorry. Never nice seen. Nice idea. So Jerry Anderson's Atlantis oh. never made it past that early concept stage. Although that puppet yeah. does still exist and occasionally appears at uh, conventions. Also this month, we welcomed sci-fi author Robert J. Sawyer to the podcast, where he gave us his thoughts on the worlds of Space Precinct and Space 1999, in particular, the thorny issue of the casting. So it's funny how it works with casting, because Ted Shackelford was the star. And it's the same thing that happened with Space 1999. They're looking for a big-name American star to put in a British show so it'll sell in the United States. No. <laughs> Except he wasn't really a big-name American star, right? I never liked Ted Shackelford and the stuff he was doing in North America. And so, you know, when you're going to have a guy playing against guys in heavy appliances, as he was on that, you need a guy who's got, a degree of warmth to him that I never found in Shackleford. So, of course, I'm aware of the show and I'm aware of Terra Hawks, and you very kindly sent me a set of Terra Hawks discs, which I'm very, very grateful for, Jamie. For me, the last major Anderson for me yeah. was 1999, Space 1999. And, you know, we can argue back and forth first season versus yeah. second season because they are very different shows, very different shows. I think the second season overcompensated for the coldness of the first season and somewhere in between, maybe that's, maybe that's Barry Morse You're calling right. now to say, it's my phone ringing. <laughs> Barry, Barry from Beyond the Grave saying, I'm up for season three. I never should have quit season two. I could have used the money. But yeah. there was an overcompensation. So somewhere in between, there's an imaginary Space 1999 1.5 halfway between the two versions that never got made that I think you know could have run as long as uh, Star Trek or any other long running franchise in February we said goodbye to two Anderson alumni Nicholas Parsons and Alan Patillo and pod 86 gave us the opportunity to pay tribute to them both Well, I'm very sad to say that at the end of that round, it's time to say goodbye to our good friend, His Holiness, the Space Pope. And as we lash one of his legs to the wheel and the other to this 10-ton weight, I just want to say that it's been a pleasure to have you with us. I hope you've enjoyed your time here too, sir. Wonderful. I didn't understand it, but it was wonderful. 
There we are, the master at work. Yes, absolutely. Now, if you want to hear more of that, then you can pick up Terrorhawks Series 2 on CD and download from the Jerry Anton store from Big Finish. Highly recommend them, obviously. But yes, it's really nice hearing it and just remembering what fun he was yes. and how he took it all in his stride, despite the yes. fact that he was dealing with bizarre characters. Yeah. You know, a very strange situation. And being and, directed by you. I was going to say, <laughs> and playing opposite one bloke doing all the male voices, <laughs> which is what you were doing on the day. Yeah, that's right. Actually, the greatest compliment I heard paid to him was on the radio the other day, I think on the day he died, just commenting that he was what you might consider an all-rounder. I mean, he really had such a varied career. Many of yeah. us know him as a quiz show host. Many of us would know him from Doctor Who, of course, and from early movies as well. You know, he really did have a go at everything and excelled at everything he did, which is quite extraordinary. Yeah. A very bright and driven chap. Was yeah, Nicholas. absolutely. Yeah. So now, do you have some Alan Patillo messages as well? I do. Which is so while we're yeah. going on with these tributes, absolutely. So over on Facebook, uh, Caroline Smith posted his Thunderbirds teleplays were always full of great characterisation and sophistication. Trapped in the sky, brink of disaster, perils of Penelope, security hazard, Atlantic Inferno, another Anderson legend departs. Thank you for the happy memories, sir. Chris Gibbings says much the same R.I.P. He came up with the most original episodes of UFO, The Square Triangle, which had a great idea and surprising ending. And uh, finally, Alex Kay said, As a kid, as much as I loved and respected Jerry Anderson, I knew I could never grow up to be him. To become a solid TV writer-director like Alan Patillo seemed far more feasible, and I was very happy with that. Now he's gone. There are people currently working in pop culture who could learn a lot from Mr. Patillo, tell a great story, and tell it well. That's it. R.I.P. Alan. That's great, isn't it? Nice. Yeah. I think that's a, a perfectly well summed up yeah. nice tribute. Exactly. Yeah. One of the staples of the podcast is the ever popular randomizer, presented by the randomizer general himself, Chris Dale. Come hell or high water, he brings us a different episode of a different Anderson show every week, even when, as in Pod 87, he's recovering from a cold. <laughs> You don't need another specimen. Oh, uh, hello, everyone. Well, after I was a bit poorly in last week's randomizer intro, I thought I'd better get a checkup from one of the many fine doctors of the Jerry Anderson universe. But they were all busy, so Marina's brought me back to Marineville for a consultation with Dr. Doc. What is it, Doc? Exhaustion, maybe? Oh, I'm baffled, Commander. The tests don't tell us anything. Well, I wouldn't have thought there'd be anything to find. I mean, it was only a cold. I'm afraid it's not that easy, Commander. There's no doubt he's dying. You what? Oh, no. He can't be. I've done all I can, Atlanta. Hey, you mean you've done nothing and you're all out of ideas? What do you mean I'm dying? I'd say he'll be gone in four hours. Marina is agreeing. The doctor must be right. Oh, there must be a first time for everything, but I'm sure this isn't it. In other words, you don't know the cause. At the moment, no. Well, we're going to have this case wrapped up in no time at all, aren't we? I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. Well, there is one thing. I'm afraid the task is beyond me, or any Earth doctor. Well, pressing the button on the randomizer for me? I'm sure even Dr. Venus could manage that. I'll do all I can, but time is short. No, thank you. So, Doc, what are you hoping for from today's episode? Some kind of trance. Form of paralysis. Well, any episode with you in is guaranteed to cause such things, but... That is the answer. Indeed. Oh, it looks like you're going to get your wish. We're facing the hypnotic sphere in Fireball XL5. At the moment, that's all we can do. February also brought us newsy news 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 of two new novels from the pen of Gregory Norris. Jerry Anson News is mm -hmm. here. Yes. Go what? on. Hmm? Go what on now. Say it. Okay. Newsy news news news. Thank you very much. Now, Richard, I saw you reading ahead in the script. Yes. And going... T-Dat? What What's T-Dat? Yeah. What's going on? Well, it stands for the day after tomorrow. Of course it does. Which, of course, is Wednesday. Uh, yeah. Uh, from the day of release. Yeah, I mean. Oh, yes. Anyway, yes, the day after tomorrow, a, a lesser-known Jerry Anderson pilot originally showed in the 1970s and showed again a few years ago on BBC4 as part of Brian Cox's special night that he had. Right. If you may remember, it's got Nick Tate and Brian Blessed yeah. and Joanna Dunham and... Martin Lev and yep. uh, Kate Levy in it. Oh, yeah. Bit of Ed Bishop voiceover. Great. So it was only a pilot episode, but it was meant to spin off into a full series. But that never happened mm. because it wasn't successful enough as part of um, 
It's NBC's special treat series, I think. Anyway, if you want to learn more about the original, then you can go over to our YouTube channel and watch the Day After Tomorrow primer. Ah. But if you want to know what happened next, then you'll definitely want to pick up the Day After Tomorrow Into Infinity and the Day After Tomorrow Planet Fall. Oh, yes. Which are two novels written by Gregory L. Norris, mm -hmm. which continue the adventures of the crew of the Altares, including once they've got through the black hole, the first time they encounter a planet. Ah, oh, okay. So both books are available on the Jerry Anderson store now, shop.jerryanderson.co.uk, or Amazon if you prefer. Yeah. Uh, and also as uh, Kindle books if you want to grab them oh, from yeah. there. Yeah, good. Nice. So, And they've got really lovely covers on them. Cool. Oh, <laughs> Love a good cover. They are. Really nice artwork. Look at the spines on that. Who could ever say we don't get amazing guests here on the Jerry Anderson podcast? Everyone from actors and writers who worked on the shows to celebrity fans who grew up with them. And even, as in Pod 89, a rather special visit from someone who's had a more interesting year than most. <laughs> My name's Boris Johnson. You're listening to the Jerry Anderson podcast podcast presented by uh, Richard James and Jamie Anderson. No ifs, no buts. Listen to this. It's oven ready. And, uh, you know, let's get this podcast done. Not really. It was Space Precinct actor Will Barton who went on to give us his thoughts on working on Jerry Anderson's last live action TV series. It's not all plain sailing here on the podcast, though. In pod 91 from March, we even got a complaint. Oh, and a message from one of the many listeners who just seem to have stumbled across us. Now, Jamie, Thanks. I'm afraid to say Ooh. we've had a complaint. <gasps> yeah. Why? We have. What have we done? Well, this is, is from it about my... your uh, language in that previous episode. No, 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 that wasn't my language. That was Will Barton. In fact, it was Ray Winston's language, wasn't it? And in the previous one with the Fab Factor, uh, oh, with yes, um, Robert yes, that Vaughan was, and that Larry Dawn Porter. Yes, that's true. Now, Mark it's not that. Perkins, no, got in touch at podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk, as many people have been. To say this, I wish to register, he says, a complaint. Uh-oh. I was doing my citizen's duty, as ever, looking out for Mr. On Threats wherever I go, and spotted some suspicious activity whilst at the petrol station. I followed Destiny Angel's advice in pod 88 and shouted, charge it to Spectrum, as I drove off without paying. My case comes up at Sheffield Magistrates Court next week, and I'd like to call Big Finish Productions in my defence. From Mark Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Very good. Yeah, I mean... The thing is, Mark, that that defence only works after 2067. Oh, oh yes. So I'm afraid you're a little bit premature yeah, with that. A little bit premature. So uh, we can't really defend you in this yeah. case. And he also got in touch to say, Hi, Jamie and Richard. Well, he says, I finally made it up to date with the podcasts. I discovered them late in 2019 by accident and can't believe I've not heard of them before. Anyway, as an avid Jerry Anderson fan and a bit OCD with a lot of things, I had to listen from pod one and heard them blossom into their current form. Uh, some great <laughs> interviews and the banter between you always makes me smile. Weirdly. Oh. He says, one of my favourite pods was the one with Stanley Unwin. The Stanley Unwin intro, although I can't remember which one it was. Keep up the good work. Cheers, Andy. And he says, P.S. I may write again with some more spoutings of my love of all things Anderson. Yes, uh, Andy, do. Do send them in. Because we, we love to be hear them. more than thrilled to read more spoutings of love about all things Anderson. Yes. It would be rather marvellous. Wouldn't it, Dickie Jiminy's? It certainly would, Mr. Anderbold. <laughs> <laughs> in our interview with Dr. David Parker from ESA, he talked to Jamie about technology and when Jerry Anderson ideas become reality, or not. But Elon Musk is playing with those, right? I know they haven't gone into space, but the vertical takeoff and landing rockets. Absolutely, yeah. No, I mean, that's been one of the most amazing things to see for me in the past few years is when you did the first flight of the Falcon 9, where there were three boosters and two of them came back right next to each other. <laughs> Probably the new, yeah, just... Jerry Anderson stuff said, yeah, it's like something out of Thunderbirds. Well, that was science fiction becoming reality. And uh, there are people working on ideas, amazing spacecraft that could take off from this, a runway and go straight into space. Something more like sort of Zero X out of, you know, Thunderbirds Argo, which is still the most, again, elaborately complicated thing you've ever seen. <laughs> so, yeah, there's always, I can't help seeing the parallels. Uh, all the time in, re in the real world of what's going on in the world. Yeah. 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 Well, more and more of it is coming true. I mean, is there, is there anything from Thunderbirds 
that you think is outside the realms of possibility in terms of what they were doing in, with flight and space? There is always some bits of script that must have got through the script editor that I, that make me laugh. There's something, Is there's one of the episodes, is it Red Arrow, where there's, or there's some fighter aircraft that's supposed to be capable of speeds of accelerated light. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> His light has a fixed speed. You can, so what accelerated light is, I don't know. So that's a, that's a great quote. But going to Mars is still our biggest challenge. And so uh, however we do that, the Zero X spacecraft having, they switch to a kind of electric propulsion as soon as it's taken off and gone into orbit. And that's, that's exactly what we're doing now. We're about to start building the first spacecraft to go to Mars and come back again, the first robotic spacecraft, Mars Sample Return, we call it. And that will have electric propulsion as well as rocket engines. And it'll be a long voyage there and a long voyage back. So, yeah, we'll eventually catch up with Jerry Ends. <laughs> Maybe by 2065, if we're lucky. Exactly. Yes, Wouldn't yeah, that be yeah. nice? Hopefully no rock snakes on Mars, though. <laughs> And finally, in March, how could we forget the bit of Jerry Anderson news that really was out of this world? Well, you may have heard the news, mm -hmm. but don't worry, we have sent Spacehawk yeah. into space. You've done what now? Spacehawk, which is the Terrorhawks orbiting station yeah. and the kind of first line of defence against attacks from Zelda and her androids on Mars. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got a Bandai toy uh -huh. of Spacehawk. Well, I, I did have. And we worked with Raptor Aerospace yes. to launch Spacehawk on a rocket into space. Really? <laughs> yeah. The flight took place at the end of February. Oh. The launch was successful. Yeah. Uh, you should be able to see videos of said launch and photos on our YouTube channel and the Jerry Anson website. Great. And I'm pleased to report that Spacehawk went briefly into orbit before returning safely via parachute and it's now back on Earth after a successful test flight. Have you got it back or is it on its way? So, no, it, it's with Raptor currently. Yeah. And what we're probably going to do is auction it for charity. Nice. We'll probably split it between the Young People's Puppet Theatre and Alzheimer's Society, something great. like that. Yeah. So keep an eye out for that. It was a great little fun thing to do. Ben uh, Jarvis, who's the, the boss at Raptor, actually reached out to me over Christmas in response to one of my Boxing Day posts about Dad's anniversary of passing. Mm hmm and yeah, it all Amazing. sprung from that. Bizarre. I mean, I, literally on Boxing Day, I think, I was messaging back and forth with Ben. <laughs> and was like, we're doing a rocket launch. Have you got anything you want to send up? Oh. I was like, well, it's 2020. How about Space Hawk? Oh, I love Terrorhawks. Great. It's crazy how these things happen. Yeah, isn't that's it? brilliant. In Pod 97 in April, Lavender Castle voice artist David Holt summed up the magic of Jerry Anderson. So from sitting down on that wet carpet as a, a youngster <laughs> yeah. watching Thunderbirds yeah. to actually being involved very directly with the a, a Jerry Anderson show. Yeah. Are there any qualities that you can draw out from those very different experiences that make an Anderson show an Anderson show? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I thought about this and I think for me, they were so cinematic and that's what appealed to me. They they had such high production values. The quality was there. You know, even as a, even as a little boy, I could tell they just head and shoulders above anything else I was watching on television. Just basically in terms of how they looked. And of course, I realise now that they were shot on thirty five mil film uh, with big you know cinema spec film cameras, mm. full lighting, full you know the whole. They were treated as a, you know, a, a top end cinematic type production and, uh, and all that went into it. The fact that they were short, you know, episodes of 50 minutes long, or whatever they were, didn't matter. They had everything that a film had. They were dramatic. They were colorful. They had great machines, <laughs> which was a big thing for me, big, big tick for me. Yeah. Great characters as well. Very clearly defined characters each very, you know, very different and identifiable. And um, they were, you know, everything, the voices, the look of them, the colour, the invention, the sheer creativity, and not to mention, you know, not to forget the incredible music that was used in them as well. There are so many layers in, in these productions, and that's what makes them, made them stand out to me 
way back then in the 1960s and early 70s. But what gives them this great longevity and why we're still talking about them now here in the 2020, you know, we're still talking about them. An amazing summary. Thank you very much, David. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's great. We love it when our listeners get creative. And let's face it, we all needed something to do this year. So Pod 99 gave them the chance to do just that and maybe even win a prize. We've got Jerry Anson News and it starts with something we announced on Friday, just gone, Friday the 1st of May. Oh, yeah. And that is we are having a month-long Tracy Island Make competition. Oh, fantastic. Now, Tracy Island may not mean a lot to you if you were not watching Thunderbirds in the 1990s or early 2000s, but to be honest, who wasn't watching Thunderbirds in the early 1990s and 2000s? (laughs) It was a big problem of how many people were interested in it because it created this amazing resurgence in fandom. Kids uh, all over the UK watching it as it was re-shown on the BBC. There was a new Thunderbirds Tracy Island toy. Mm -hmm. both in the early 90s and the early 2000s. Uh, The first one was Matchbox, I think, and then Vivid Imaginations did the second one. And uh, both times, it was a number one Christmas toy. It sold out, and there were many, many children left disappointed across the UK. So in response to that, Blue Peter, a children's magazine show that's been running since the 1960s. Is Is that right, Richard? uh, Yes, it's still going. I'm assuming it is. It's still going, I think. In some form, right, yeah, yeah. They had a regular feature, which was the the make feature, Mm. which is to give you little arts and crafts projects to do at home. And uh, they created a Tracy Island make feature, which became their most requested fact sheet ever, with 100,000 requests in the first week after it was done the first time. Amazing. Now, Anthea Turner is the name most related to that because she was the one who did the make. Mm -hmm. And in fact, she still has the completed Tracy Island make in her house. Really? Yes. Now, we are running a competition. We're hoping lots of people are going to get involved all over the world, hopefully. Kids doing it on their own. Parents and kids doing it together. Adults doing it on their own. Anyone who wants to make a Tracy Island can make it. Mm -hmm. Pop along to the Jerry Anderson website and you will find a download of the original details, the original plans put together. Now, some of the things that they use there are no longer available, certainly in the UK. Right. Uh, Fairy liquid washing up bottles are no longer plain white cylinders with a green logo on there now. Fancy colours and all sorts of things. So you're going to have to find alternative materials. Yeah. But if you would like to enter, you've got a month to do so. You can email in photos of your make to tracyislandmake at jerryanderson.co.uk. Post them on social media with the hashtag tracyislandmake. Mm-hmm. That's Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y, yeah. no E in there. No. And we will be picking winners at the end of May, in fact, the first week of June. And your judges include me yeah. and world-renowned nuclear physicist... Dr. Anthea Turner. <laughs> what? Anthea Turner herself will be <laughs> judging, providing her input and helping us select a winner and five runners up. Finally, in April, Chris Dale faced what could be the worst Jerry Anderson story ever in the randomizer. Twenty five minutes of episode or no oxygen. Hallucination, a slow and peaceful drift through dream to real eternity, because it's just nothing, the ultimate negative, poison, pain, yet more pain, this body of peace perhaps for some future archaeologist to fit into an historical puzzle. Chris Dale from planet Earth, first and last commander of the Randomizer. On the other hand, it is only 25 minutes long and surely watching it and living would be preferable to throwing myself out into space without an air pack like this, although admittedly there's not much difference between death and watching this episode. Well, it's here. The big one. The worst one. The single worst Jerry Anderson episode of all time, in my opinion at least, is here and it's now. Brace yourselves for the protectors with 
It could be practically anywhere on the island. I am so sorry. Well, I can positively say that our little friend no longer has the fallen body in his stomach. You know what that means. I don't understand. This is the moment it's all been building to. An Arkansas farmer told me once about a cow who swallowed a fly. And the fly fell asleep in the cow's stomach. And when the fly woke up, the cow was gone. Dog poo. You, you mean... The episode has been... The microfilm could be practically anywhere on the island. Leading up to the big revelation of dog poo. You know, when that's the, the climax to your episode, I... I can't. What can I say? Well, that was It Could Be Practically Anywhere on the Island, and that was as awful as I remembered it. Um, two things really stand out from that one. No, actually three. One, the fact that it ended. Everybody's two, then Doc Chef is giving the performance that uh, uh, you know, he treats this episode with the contempt it deserves. And three, that puppy is so cute. But otherwise, my God, this is the worst thing I have ever seen with a Jerry Anderson name on. I am so glad I'm done with it now. May saw our 100th pod, and they said it would never last. The Jerry Anderson Podcast with Jamie Anderson and Richard James. <laughs> Jamie! Richard James. Oh, Jamie Anderson. It's, it's so the exciting. the Jerry Anderson Podcast. Yeah. Not pod 100. 100. We made yeah. it. Can we stop now? We probably should, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's all from us, listeners. Yeah. Thanks for listening in. <laughs> Goodbye. A hundred pods. Mm. I mean, I think we've got to be all quite proud of ourselves, really, haven't we? The listeners, those of us on the team that make the thing, Chris, Laura, Tim in the store. Big shout out to Tim. Yes, uh, Chris, AC yeah. and Ross, who does the audiograms to make sure that those of you who are listening on YouTube can actually listen on yeah. YouTube every week. That's right. Gosh, there we so are. Thanks, everyone. We've done it. We can relax now. It's all downhill from now on. Pod 100 included a look back over some of my favourite podcasts, plus a special feature from Chris Dale, the genesis of Thunderbirds. At 7pm on September 30th, 1965, viewers of ATV Midlands were the very first to see the latest Super Mario Nation production from AP Films, the television studio based in Slough that had already enjoyed huge success with Supercar, Fireball XL5 and Stingray. This new series was to be the biggest and most expensive production the company had mounted so far. Yet the idea for the series itself was born out of tragedy, following a mine disaster that had caught the attention of the world almost two years earlier. First of all, the idea of Thunderbirds was triggered by a German mine disaster. A lot of miners were trapped underground. I remember listening on my car radio and hearing that their oxygen was running out and a big drill was being brought in by train and there were news flashes. In this last rescue operation, the most crucial moment came a few minutes after 5 a.m., long before anybody expected. On October 24th, 1963, a lake directly over an iron mine in Germany collapsed, and at least 40 men lost their lives as water flooded into the galleries. Miraculously, more than twice that number were able to escape to the surface within just a few hours. A small pocket of 20 survivors, however, had fled to a disused section of the mine. With no way in or out, and their numbers now reduced to 11, teams on the surface hatched a desperate rescue plan. Because of the danger of burying the men alive, it had been planned to sink the shaft outside the chamber and dig a way through to the men. As it was, the escape shaft emerged in the northeast corner of the men's cavern, and the much-feared fall of rock and earth did not take place. Waiting in their cavern, listening to the drill, the miners suddenly warned the rescuers that the sound of the drill was getting heavy, and now they reported a slight fall of stones. This was the first indication the rescuers had that their shaft might penetrate the chamber itself. Long-time listeners might well have caught on to the fact that I was in Space Precinct, even though I don't like to talk about it. Well, Pod 102 saw the announcement of something rather special for Precinct fans. Go on, Richard. Newsy, news, news, news.
very dramatic reading. Wasn't it? Speaking of dramatic readings, <laughs> Richard. Oh, yes. I think there's been some rather exciting developments in the worlds of Jerry Anderson. Uh, in fact, shortly before recording this podcast, we yeah. announced the fact that there are some brand new Jerry Anderson audio productions coming very soon, thanks to a co-production deal between Anderson Entertainment and Big Finish Productions. Brilliant. Marvellous. Big breath there. Yeah. Now, you're responsible for one of these, so we'll get to that in a moment, mm-hmm. and you can tell us all about it. Yeah. But uh, at the beginning of June, you will see the release of four brand new audiobooks... Terror Hawks Expect the Unexpected by Jack Curtis. Into Infinity, that's the first Day After Tomorrow book. Or I should say Day After Tomorrow, the first Into Infinity book by Gregory L. Norris, read by Robbie Stevens. Uh, Gemini Force One, Black Horizon, read by Jacob Dudman. Yeah. And Space Precinct, Demeter City, adapted and read by Richard James. Now... Who's he? What's it, what is this space precinct? What is this Demeter City? And who is Richard James? Well, I don't know if you know this, Jamie, because I like to keep it quiet, but I was in. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, of course, so it's been 25 years since uh, we filmed 25. Space Precinct. I know, it's incredible, isn't it? A half a lifetime ago in Pinewood Studios in the mid to early to mid-90s. But did you know, Jamie, that there was a pilot script that was written but never filmed for the series? Well, I do know yeah, that because said obviously I've been yeah, I've right. been producing on this series, but, but <laughs> other people may not. So tell us about that. Well, the script was called Demeter City, and it was an introduction to the series. It told us the story of how uh, Lieutenant Brogan and his family and Officer Haldane made their way to the planet Altor to become cops in Demeter City. The story was never told. The series sort of jumped in throughout, you know, as the story had begun, really. Episode one, we were straight in, running on the streets with the cops, shooting things, solving crime. And Demeter City was never made, but that script has hung around. It's by Paul Mayhew Archer, and uh, I've been delighted to uh, have the opportunity to adapt it as an audiobook and uh, to narrate it. And uh, it will be available, I think, from June. June saw another appearance from an occasional feature on the podcast. And uh, finally, Hugh Morn posted, I received a promotional email from Tesco tonight, and the first line I saw displayed the words, Jamie's Homeschool Dinner Stir Fry. I was disappointed that it turned out to be Jamie <laughs> Oliver instead of a certain other Jamie, but who thinks our own Jamie Anderson should host his own home cooking series with Anderson references galore, which, Jamie, got me thinking. Oh no, is this Are your you surprise? Ready for a quick fire five! <sighs> right, ready for these? Not really, but go on. Five options between Anderson inspired dishes. <laughs> Captain Blue Cheese or Lieutenant Greens? <laughs> I'm going to be good and say Lieutenant Greens. Oh, well done. Captain Black Pudding or Tin Tinned Tomatoes? <laughs> Captain Black Pudding. Mm. Tracy Food Platter Oof. or Yorkshire Hooding? <laughs> uh, oh, uh, oh. Mm. Gosh, Tracy Food Platter. Right. Uh, duck a Lorin or Lady Penelope and Parmesan Soup. <laughs> I love a bit of duck. Duck a Lorin. Yeah, of course please. And finally, Torchy the Battery Boysenberry Cheesecake or Commander Sam Short Crust Pastry. <laughs> Sam Short Crust Pastry. Uh, I'm not going to get Torchy no. anything. <laughs> wow. And that concludes this surprise edition of Quick Fire 5. And finally for now, June also saw a three-part interview with model maker David Tremont, where he told us how he wanted to inspire others to just make stuff. And we couldn't agree more. It, it is a very serious concern that the ability to make stuff and understand it is being lost. A handmade is disappearing from our psyche. People just think everything can be printed and, and done on a computer and they don't even need to think about it. Speaking of which, a lot of the uh, digital artists are also suffering because they don't understand how the real world works and it's reflected in in what they produce digitally. It it doesn't resemble reality. The best digital artists are the ones that have worked in the physical world for years and they make the transition to the dark side and, and become extremely good at their craft because they understand what is real and what isn't. But, yeah, the ability to make stuff and... I absolutely believe that understanding how to make something with your hands, solving problems with your hands, thinking outside the box 
is going to help you no matter what you do, whether you're a model maker, a painter, musician, scientist, space engineer, anything, a creator, a writer, anything. If you can understand and think outside the box, it makes you more creative in whatever you do. And I just love the idea of being able to pass on my little bit, try and inspire young people, anybody really, but young people to make stuff, just be creative, just figure out how to see things differently and, and create characters, write stories. So, yes, I've, I've started producing a series of books just showing um, basic model making, telling stories, I'm not sure how else to describe it. Just, just, uh, oh, and and all all um, loosely tied together with a bunch of dumb jokes. It's been a funny old year, but together we've got through it. Join me next week when I look back at the second half of 2020. Cool, and that only takes us up to June. Uh, yeah, that's right. I know that's the first six months. Didn't, so we much. packed it in, didn't we? I know, absolutely. So, listeners, I hope you enjoyed that. The second part is coming next week. And in the meantime, do let me know what your favourite parts of the podcast have been. Have you had a favourite guest in the last 12 months or a favourite randomizer? Was there anything that particularly made you chuckle or smile? Let me know. Podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk and I'll read out your email next time. Perfect. I wonder if we should have a guest of the year vote. Oh. Oh, crikey, that's Posterons. harsh. No, no, not at all. It's not to say, oh, this person was rubbish. I'm not talking about doing a ranking. But right. I'm really interested to know who the favourite guest of the year is. Yes. So maybe okay. we could look at doing that in June. Yeah, course. interesting. Yeah. Now, Richard... Or, or favourite host of the year, perhaps. Favourite host of the year is absolutely something we could do. I mean, that does feel a bit more cruel, doesn't it? But um, <laughs> Yeah, let's not, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, no more should be mentioned about that. But, uh, Richard, I've received a complaint email Oh no, what have we done? So, Is it your fault? Uh, mm, it's both of our faults, actually. Oh, right. Yeah. So oh. do you remember we had a Chris-themed Quickfire 5 back in Pod we, 131? Uh, yes, we did, yes. When I say we, I mean you created yeah. one. Yeah, I did, yeah. Anyway, the subject of one of those questions has sent me an email. Oh, right. It's rather formal. Oh no. Dear Mr. Anderson. <gasps> bad start. Right. Yeah. I finally caught up with pod 131 with the Chris themed Quickfire 5. Oh no, who's this? I knew I'd lost, of course, because you texted me while you were on air, but I have a little bone to pick with you. Oh! In your message to me, you neglected to say which Chris Richard had paired me with. Ah. So I was listening with quite some anticipation. <laughs> I have to say, I'd have gladly conceded to any of the Chris's mentioned, but to be in the same bracket as Chris Dale, oh. one, if not the, most influential person in Anderson fandom, well, it, it's true. I certainly wouldn't have replied with the word gutted. In fact, I can't imagine a better compliment. Oh, oh, right, okay. Thanks, chaps. Phew. Keep up the great work, and I hope you and the rest of the Anderson team have a relaxing and peaceful Christmas. All best wishes. Chris Bowden. Oh, phew. Wow. So <laughs> oh, he, I know. So he actually listens then? He does oh, listen. Oh, uh, in fact, he's listening right now. That. Hello, Chris. Oh, no. Hello, Chris. Yes, yes. yes. Hi. Richard, uh, how do yeah. you say Chris's surname? Bow. 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 Bowden. Chris Bowden. Bowden. But I bet it's Bowden over Halloween. I bet he changes his Twitter handle over Halloween. I don't think Chris is on Twitter. Chris, if you what? are on Twitter, then Come why? On. I don't, I, I'm not following him. Anyway, Chris Bowden, <laughs> thank you for your kind wishes. Yes. And thank you for listening. And thank you for being on the podcast. Absolutely. Uh, was that this year? I'm sure it was that in that was review this year? just yes. now. Yes. Yeah, indeed. Yes, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bless you, Chris. That was a great chat we had there. So Yeah. Great. Ah, oh, well, that's nice, isn't it? It's not often we get complaints from our... Well, I say that. <laughs> <laughs> we get plenty we of complaints. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> ah, very nice. Now, Richard, any final thoughts before uh, we hand over to uh, post Christmas Dale? No, no, I think we should give him a prod and uh, see what he's got for us. Okay, Chris. Right, time for you to wake up. Come on, Chris. Operate a randomizer Come and on. give us what's coming to us. We should be a random Jerry Anderson episode. 
So anyway, I want you to know that I haven't just rushed to the very first Anderson character I thought of to help me with this week's intro, thereby cutting down on my workload over the festive season. Oh dear me, no. I have meticulously studied dozens of possible candidates, and I've come to the conclusion that you are far and away the best man to select the final randomizer of 2020. Yes, yeah, sir. That's what I am, if a new say so. Yes, well, um... Uh, did you have a nice Christmas, Clooney? I mean, did you do anything interesting? I've been thinking. Well, it's never too late to start, I suppose. But uh, anyway, what do you say to uh, pressing the old randomizer button today, huh? Well, I just don't know what to say. Well, you could say yes, I suppose. Otherwise, we're never going to get started here. Yes, sir. Well, go on then, choose an episode. You mean put my head in? Well, no, not inside, just, just on the button. Yeah, that's it. Yes, it's a tricky thing, but I think you've got the hang of it. Us mountain boys was always noted for our intelligence. Yes. And here's the printout. Let's see. Oh. What does it say? I can't believe this. Clooney, you've only gone and pulled up the oldest thing in the randomizer. Would you believe it? Yes, the very first and indeed only surviving episode of Twizzle. Very interesting. Well, let's find out. Yes, we're ending 2020 by heading all the way back to 1957 for Twizzle and Footso. Yes, sir. Well, what a surprise. We are closing out 2020 on the randomizer with the earliest episode I have available because it's, well, it's Twizzle. It's the only surviving episode of Twizzle, Twizzle and Footso. Have you heard of a Twizzle toy? Yes. You haven't? I have. Well, that's because there's only one of them. I do like that, actually. Uh, I love this in this this lovely intro narration and this pull into the toy shop window. Toy shop? There is something almost magical about this, um, despite how undeniably primitive it is. But I also love when she says, well, that's because there's only one of them, because we only have one Twizzle, and this is it. The gollywog was quite new. Here he is on the shelf with his friend. No, all the things that twist. The bear and the new arrival. A gollywog. Funny looking toy you are. I've never seen anything like you before. What are you? <laughs> I'm Twizzle. And I do. Oh, what? I love that he, they don't say who are you. It's just what are you? My God, what are you? I don't know what you mean. I've never seen anyone twizzle before. Oh, oh, oh. You can tell he hasn't been here long. There's lots of twizzling goes on round these parts. We do. I wonder if this is also the same gollywog who was in um, Torchy. Anyway, Twizzle is doing his thing. Boo! Extending his arms and legs, as he does. Oh, my goodness. And I would have to assume that's quite ambitious for, for such a crude puppet to do. My goodness, you are clever. <laughs> well... I don't know. I made that. If I want to reach anything, I just twizzle my arms and legs until I'm as tall as a lamppost. You must be very expensive to buy. I cost two and sixpence. Oh. And so expensive that I think I'll have to stay in the toy shop forever. But I don't know any boy or girl who could afford to buy me. Yeah, but this toy shop only has about a dozen things in it. So. We love having you here. That's very oh. kind of you, Mr. Bear. Poor old moldy Mr. Bear. Mr. Bear, oh no. We won't go there. Toy shop is my home. Ah. Is that it? Oh no. Oh my goodness. Next day, a little girl. We're looking up a little girl's bottom. She looked at the train. Oh dear. And then she looked right through the window. And straight through your soul. Yeah, she's quite quite sinister, this one. I think because she's not got a blinking mechanism, her eyes look very big. And, a green and rather unsettling. Ooh. I'm going to buy him right away. I'm kind of, I'm kind of torn on how to approach talking about this because uh, I don't want to miss anything. This is my one chance to talk about Twizzle. Wait, all up there! I saved up two shillings. So I hope he doesn't cost any more than that. I'm afraid he costs two and sixpence. But it's also interesting to look at this compared to um, Torchy, which was only a year or so later. And I know I say, oh, Torchy, this, look at Torchy, this is so primitive, blah, 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 blah. But you can see, looking at Torchy, Make such a noise. how much this show must have evolved over the course of its run. Because, you know, Torchy, as crude and ugly as it often looks, 
has like you know, more than one camera angle per scene. For he certainly didn't want to belong to such a... Oh, poor old Twizzle is trembling. <laughs> Hi, Twizzle. You can hide in here if you like. Oh, well, thank you so much. That's it, he's going to hide in the jack in the box so the naughty little girl doesn't buy him. While I come in. It's rather like Toy Story with all the toys being alive except um, they're being alive right in front of the humans who just don't actually notice them. <laughs> Are you sure you haven't got two and six? He's really such a lovely toy that it... Oh, good gracious me, where has he got to? Needless to say, the strings are just... Maybe he's falling on the floor. ...so visible as to be completely obscuring the puppet's faces at times. I'm going to leave this shop until I can take him with me. But this little girl is, is suitably horrible. Everything on my toes. Ouch! Oh, do be careful. Very reminiscent of the children from Torchy. Tickling. I'm sure I'm going to sneeze. The shopkeeper will find you if you do. Why would a toy be able to sneeze? Count to five. One, two, three, four. <laughs> oh. What was that noise? It's coming from the jack in the box. <gasps> now he's a very nice toy. Why don't you have him instead, eh? Huh? Why don't you just leave me alone? He's got the rush. Why can't you blink? Uh, have a look at him for yourself. He's Ugh. awful. What a dreadful face. Yeah. I wouldn't have him if he was... And the Jack in the Box isn't much better either. I want that Twizzle toy. So you'd better hurry up and find him for me. Why don't you come back to my... Strange that the, um, the human puppets actually seem to be smaller than the, the Gollywog and the Teddy Bear. Well. Like it looks like if he had a mind to it, the Gollywog could reach over and, and snap the little girl's neck. By then, I'll cry and scream and stab Yes, and yes, yes, I know all that. Aww. But I promise I'll have him ready for you. Well, <sighs> that's that then. Dear, dear, this is most worrying. My jaw doesn't move at all. It wasn't until very late that night, when the shop was closed, that Twizzle dared to come out. Oh dear, he's really scared of that little girl. Oh my goodness, that's quite sinister the way he looms out of the Jack in the Box. Oh dear. And the Gollywog just looks at him with that hideous open jaw and sort of rictus grin, lolling his head around. I think I could Twizzle now if I tried. Oh. We'll have to find a better hiding place tomorrow. The shopkeeper's sure to look in here sooner or later. I can't think of anywhere else for Twizzle to hide. You'll have to burn down the shop. You can do, Twizzle. You'll have to run away. <laughs> oh, poor Twizzle. But I don't want to run away. This is my home. Yeah, he spends all day sitting on a shelf doing nothing. It's beautiful. And it's much better to run away on your own than to belong to a naughty child. She'll pull off your arms and legs in no time at all. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. How awful. Yeah. I can see I will have to run away. Well, sucks to be you guys. I'm off. Look. The door is locked. The window's open. You can jump into the street. But I might get broken. No, you won't. I'll throw you. To me. And I'll tell you what to do. Now, get some matches. Climb up onto the window ledge. I like this teddy bear, actually. He looks quite old and mouldy, but the voice is a nice fit. Oh my goodness, a new, a new angle. Twizzle making his way up onto some uh, other toys, and toy boxes, and what looks like a safe. Up to the wide open window that the toy shop owner has, uh, has left for anyone to break in and uh, steal his, well... Not much, really. The pavement's an awfully long way down. Of course it isn't. It's going to be very difficult. Just twizzle your arms and legs, and you'll be able to reach the ground. Just do that thing you've been able to do your whole life that you're now apparently forgetting about. Good grief, Twizzle. Do I have to think of everything for you? And see us one day. Oh. Goodbye, teddy bear. Goodbye, gollywog. And thank you, Jack in the Box. Goodbye, oh. Twizzle. We won't forget you. Oh, and Twizzle God. jumped into the street and hurried off as fast as his twizzly legs would carry him. Oh, that click is quite disturbing. 
Um, goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Again, he is definitely taller than than the normal human characters. He walked all that night, and he walked all the next day. Oh. Oh, these backgrounds are so... You know, they're, they're clearly just hand-drawn little cartoon-like almost backgrounds, but they are they are quite charming. And there's uh, something about knowing that there's just a puppeteer with this puppet draped, uh, sort of dangling over the, the the top of this backdrop that's rather endearing. I'm so tired. Soon it grew dark again, and the wind began to blow. The seasons changed and the weather grew worse, but Twizzle kept on walking. Blowing me off my feet! Oh. Hello! What a funny looking house that is! Why, it's not a house at all! It's a dog kennel, and it's just my size! So Twizzle wriggled inside and made himself comfortable. Inside, it was warm and cosy. Twizzle sat and listened to the noise of the wind. And despite the, the, the Twizzle puppets looking somehow even cruder than the, the Torchy puppets, I do find myself drawn more into this world. This is slightly more... Sounds like a very fierce animal. Slightly more a comforting world than the world of Torchy. I mean, maybe in the remaining 51 episodes, it, it leapt off the deep end much the same way Torchy did, but... Um, I don't know, this seems a bit more wholesome. He saw a yellow eye. Oh. Then he saw another yellow eye. Oh. Ooh. And a black nose and long, twitching whiskers. And his foot's so the cat. Oh. <laughs> As voiced by Denise Breyer. What are you doing in my house? I gather this is a character she has a, a fondness for even now. Um, even though uh, Futso doesn't really look much like a cat, he looks more like a sort of spider-like creature. What's your name? My name is Futso. I've got such big paws, you see, that I'm always falling over them. Twizzle's inability to close his mouth, or indeed move it when he has dialogue, is uh, actually getting to be quite distracting. When he's not talking, his head's at a cockeyed angle, he just looks like... Away from the house where oh, I, I don't know, he looks drunk. Always laughing at my big paws. Oh. How funny. We've both run away, and we've both met each other. We'll have to be friends and stay together all the time. Oh, well, I don't know about that. Yeah. Uh, I've been very lonely myself. Oh. Watch out! Watch out! Of course, that's Nancy Nevinson doing the voice of Twizzle. Uh, later reappeared in, in UFO, of all things. She's in The Man Who Came Back, very briefly. For adventure. That's it. Curled up in the doghouse. Now rest my head on your tail. With Futso and... Um, yeah, the puppeteers are trying to get these puppets to do things they're not quite capable of. I can't sleep! curling up next to each other to sleep. Oh, sorry, Twizzle, but I always purr when I'm happy. Uh -huh. You just have to get used to it. Oh, dear. If I don't get used to it, I'll have to put some cotton wool into my ears. How nice it is. How warm and cosy. In no time at all, Twizzle and Futso were fast asleep even though neither of their eyes are capable of closing. To have together. Ah, and that was it. That was where it all began. First episode of Twizzle, Twizzle and Futso, directed by Jerry Anderson. Well, well, well. It's hard to judge that on, on its own, because I'd love to know where the rest of the series went after that. I imagine it probably leaned more towards the torchy, you know, toy land antics. Um, but as a... That's the first episode as a little kid in the 50s who hadn't seen anything more interesting in the puppet field. I would definitely have come back for more of that, I think. That's it. Bye, Twizzle. Oh. That's way back when, isn't it? Yeah, well, 1957, something like that. And Denise Breyer there making her first appearance in the Anderson universe as Fritzo the Cat. That's astonishing. Do you remember when we had a cup of tea and a slice of cake with her at Paddington Station? I mean, 
I remember I've had a lot more than a cup of tea and a slice of cake with old Denise. <laughs> Did I tell you about that time? Yeah. When uh, we finished recording Terrorhawk Series 2 for Big Finish, and we all went out for dinner afterwards. Yeah. Um, actually, we didn't finish. It was, the, it was the end of the first day of recording. Yeah. And uh, we went out for dinner, and, um, we, you know, we had a few drinks and uh, mm-hmm. got fairly far into the evening, and Denise said... Right, I think we want cocktails. Let's have cocktails, everyone. And, you know, it was a nice evening, so we all, yes. you know, got involved. Yeah. And Denise was busy ordering espresso martinis, oh, I, I believe. espresso martini. Lovely. Several rounds of those. Right. Eventually, everybody went home. Yeah. Recording the next day, never a good idea to have a party night the night before yeah. a, a day of recording. Anyway, I got into the studio. Nobody was there. Uh, Jeremy Hitchin sort of lurches in, followed by Robbie <gasps> and Beth. And then Denise arrives. All right. <laughs> Darlings, how are all of you? I feel wonderful. I've never felt better. <laughs> so all of us were a bit hungover and knackered. She oh. at, and what would she have been then? 90, Crikey. 89? Ooh, yeah, sure. Fresh as a daisy. Lovely. Amazing, amazing Presser. and lovely lady. So, Fantastic. yes, great to hear her first appearance there. Yes. Uh, and thank you, Chris, taking us yeah. right back to the very beginning of Everything Anderson. Yeah. Gosh. Amazing, <laughs> isn't it? And such a, that, that's a real link with the past. That's why I think we appreciate these older actors, because, you know, there she was doing the Terror Hawks audio. When was that? Five, six, seven years ago, perhaps? Uh, not even that long ago. Right. Four years ago, I think. And yet we've just heard a randomizer from 1950-odd, and there she is. Yeah. It is, it is brilliant. So, yeah, lovely to look back. And that's why we do the randomizer to re examine yeah. all that fantastic stuff. Absolutely. Well, that was definitely you, worth waking Chris up for, wasn't it? Yeah, well, he's, he's already fallen back to sleep, hasn't he? Look at oh, that. Slumped typical. over, dribbling yeah. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, doing his very oh, nice. best young star impression, I think, by the look yes, of it. Yes, that'll be it. Yeah. Right. Well, I think that kind of brings us to the end of our 2020 final yes. version of, of the podcast, Gosh, doesn't it? That's, that's it. That's it for the year, then. That's it. Our next one will be in 2021, in the future. It's just gone 20 past eight. Has it? What, in the evening? 2021? Uh, 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 (laughs) Oh, no? Have I got it wrong? I got terribly confused there. I actually thought it was 8.20pm when we were recording. (laughs) It's not. No. Thank you, everybody, for listening to us for a whole other year. Who would have believed it? I know. And very soon we'll be into 2021 and things will be improving and uh, we'll be leaving COVID and all that behind as a distant memory. We will. So thank you all. Have a fantastic new year. And we'll see you on the other side. See you then. Happy new year. Happy new year. Bye. Bye. One complete. Let's go. Spectrum is green. Right, Richard. Yes. Before we wrap up, I think it's oh. very important that you and I talk New Year's resolutions. I've oh, got a right. few I'm thinking of for you. I don't want to. You... I don't wanna put too much on your plate, though. So, okay. any you're thinking for yourself before I get there? Well, only the usual. Try and go to bed early. Try and sit up straight. You know that kind of thing. Oh yeah, you just reminded me. I slouched over oh, this whole time. My posture's oh, terrible. Did you hear my back crack? Then yeah, is that what it was? <laughs> I thought it was the chair. <laughs> that was my back. Oh dear. Okay, you're right. So that, I'll add those two onto my list. Right. Yes. A- anything else? Um, well, I'd really like to. Um, I tell you what, I'd love to do. Mm. I'd like to meet some friends and have a few drinks, not too many. I have a nice walk along the River Thames Ooh. and just chew the fat. Okay. Right. That could fine. Happen. Yes, I think that will definitely happen. Yeah. Possibly with espresso martinis. Splendid. I'll get on the call. To, uh, I'll get on the phone to Denise right now. <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> All right. Happy New Year. And to you, bye. Bye. You have been listening to the Jerry Anderson Podcast. Wasn't it fun? You have been listening to an Anderson Entertainment production. 